Welcome, Mr. Steve back. And we're gonna go over the repeat zone briefly. I've got a little node group here worked out. Uh, there's two iterations. So if I bring this down, you can see I'm affecting the node group inside and stacking whatever is inside of the repeat zone, just like the simulation zone. So let's jump right in and check it out. All right, so as usual, in geometry nodes, you can start out with whatever, whatever uh, mesh you want. I'm gonna be in Blender 4.0, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click new. Now, right here, I'm gonna go ahead, shift A, S, and I'm gonna put in the repeat zone. You can just type it in. I don't think there's a thing yet for it, a search. Um, I see simulation, but I don't see repeat zone anywhere. So no worries, you can always find it with the search. And I'm just going to slice this and then connect these to the outside and we'll have our mesh back. Now, if you throw any node in here that can manipulate geometry, one really good example would be the extrude. And so I'll just throw that in there. And you get um, a nice stack. It's going to repeat whatever is in that zone however many times you click it, which says to me that if I have a node group and I'll yep. just choose this node group that I have here and you know whatever you've got going on inside of your node group and you were going to say stack this a bunch of times and then string all these together in series well you don't have to do that anymore you can just have one you could drop it in and there's nothing like properly connected to this because it's target geometry for ray casting but for the example's sake uh, I could bring this up six seven eight nine ten times and I'm just going to zap that out of the zone and unfortunately <laughs> it took a second for it to load I gotta bring the iterations back down so kind of try to keep that in mind and be careful so you don't crash yourself out and just go ahead and mute that for a second and bring these iterations back down to something manageable and unmute it. So I'm going to throw in a scale and what we're going to do with that with scale elements is we can take say the top selection of the extrude mesh and we can plug it in to our scale for sure, right? But if I want to take the top and I want to output from the repeat zone, I now have access to it here. And I have access to it over here to select itself. I'm going to check the little boolean here on the repeat input that sets top. And then when I come back over here and I start offsetting the scale in any certain way, and I'll go back to individual, we can kind of see what's going on. Um, from here, I can bring the iterations up and start stacking. And it's literally just going to repeat whatever you have attached to it. And I'll have to kind of play with it a little bit more. But just for the fun of it, you could bring that up and potentially get like a neat little fractal going on with it. Uh, I think you could also take the offset here and you could use the new Voronoi texture, which has a normalize on it. Plug the position into the offset, then turn on normalize and then go from F1 to distance um, to edge. And now you'll be able to go to 4D. Hang on a second. <laughs> and yeah, so you get a neat little fractal, like pulsating fractal thing here. If you bring this up, maybe that doesn't look so good, but I think it's just a matter of scale. So 0.1 perhaps. Yeah, definitely deserves to be uh, played with a little bit more that's kind of cool all right but anyways so and from here obviously you can shift a s type in scene and get a scene time and you can plug the frame into the w and you can hit play and then you could also throw in something like a divide oops just throw in a math note and we could set this to divide. We'll try 0.25. Now hit play again. And 
and just kind of scale it up and see what I might want. And now while that's kind of going, it seems to be like really low on resources. I'm kind of play around with it and do some different settings. And we could throw in a combine XYZ, plug that into the offset and just offset the Z scale and just get that right there. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Then you could probably go ahead and translate that. Let's see. I think you would want to translate that before or after the sim, uh, not simulation zone, but before or after the repeat zone. So I want to transform this and scale it down just a touch. It's kind of cool. And I do remember, and I don't do it very often, but when you're animating, uh, usually you want to put in, like when you put in the hashtag frame on the W, or like if you come over here and you type in hashtag frame forward slash whatever, I put like 1000, and it usually does pretty good and makes it nice and slow. So I'm getting about the same result there. And if I clear, let's see. Reset the default values, clear drivers, edit, open, delete drivers, there we go. And plug this back into the W and put 3000, it'll slow it down. So don't be afraid to go real high. And I'm sure there are some other uh, more intuitive ways to do this, but this is just one way you can do it. And I can turn off the normalize and kind of play around with the scale. There we go, that flattened it out nicely. That's what I was looking for. So you can see the settings I used there for the Voronite texture. I just put it on a combined XYZ and threw it into the offset. And then the offset scale can be kind of made to um, fine tune it, if you will. And then you have this like really beautiful fractal looking deal here. That's actually pretty cool. And that's Voronite, right? So now we can play around with that scale. Not that much. That's pretty cool. All right, I like that. And so the general idea is that you can just take data and pass it in and out of the zone and you can build a network around it. And then if you wanted to, you can throw the um, extrude mesh outside and you can now take that same top selection and you can plug it in and get some like pretty wonky stuff. And I would, take this setup what am i stretching out here that's my frame setup i could take this setup and take the combine xyz and i can also offset this one and then have like a little variation so like some of those other faces that are in there it will now extrude those as well and that's still going incredibly fast we could slow it down a touch more is that 10,000 or is it 10 million i don't know what i'm putting in all right, and then of course, you can bring another scale out here as well, and you can throw that one in. And I would say maybe you can play around with that for like the sides, and you can scale the secondary extrude mesh that is also being offset on the Z axis. And so it gets kind of complex. Now you're like, wait a minute, this isn't the repeat. Well, let's go ahead and click to repeat down and see what we get first because it's a little bit safer and you can see the little extrudes that are there and then we'll just kind of bring it up i think like right here is good and so that gives you a little bit more control and i think it'd be very careful with the fractals um, because definitely crash worthy all right and i've got a little trick for you if you want to um, put more than one material on your mesh and you've only got like one output you're not really doing anything extra but what you can do is you can just throw a join geo right here and what we can do is we can say hey for this extrude mesh that's on the outside i'm going to set the material so i already made a blue material and an orange material just like my blender 4.0 setup and if i drop that in it turns orange Ah, ha, ha. Now we'll take our original join and plug that in. And there is a little uh, crud on the sides here. I think it's probably because I'm using side. 
But either way, doesn't matter. Uh, you can kind of play around with this. It's 3D is all about the illusion anyways. So if you threw a camera in right here, you know, or you did an animation kind of up close, you'll get you'll get the good part of the, the geometry. But that's all I got for you guys. Um, I was going to build a different node network around it, but this seems like the best simplified way of doing it just so people can get an idea of what it's for in like the real use case. But there's a ton of other uses. And if you like this video, smash that subscribe, ring that bell so you always get notifications because I do a lot of Blender 4.0 updates and 3.6 and we'll always do them on this channel. And I now have another channel which is completely dedicated to... Let me go ahead and pause this. Completely dedicated to updates for 4.0. And I'm going to pull, yeah, that was my editing screen. Um, I'm going to pull the splash screen back. And you know, it's funny, I actually halfway want to play around with this a little bit more. So I'm going to save this one as odd repeat zone 2 and save that bad boy. I want to show you again one little thing. Um, you can build your networks around and have some cool things going on. I do have a proximity video based on how to do this. So if you're um, interested in having like nets and things around using proximity to kind of raise up your mesh and do some really cool things, then I got you covered. Um, just search that out. Actually, I'll put a link in the description. I'll make it easy for you guys. Um, yeah, and if you don't have any good add-ons you need to start upping your game as well and i have the lm studio which is a full lighting add-on super cool tons and tons of options it's a camera manager it's a light manager and it's going to um, have some automatic things in here so if you click focus it's going to pull in the first object that's closest to the camera and has a little algorithm to read that and do it. You got the pass parte, you've got thirds, depth of field, all kind of things. I've got mouse modals in here. So if you hit uh, Alt X, you can change the light intensity and then like Control Alt C or is it Alt C? Yeah, Alt C will change the focal length. Um, so it's just it's very automated, very fun uh, to have add ons. Then I've got the hard surface toolbox bevel magic and i've got the b box and the b box is cool i'll actually just throw some stuff out real quick and click add b box and then you've got this really neat boolean setup because i'm going like completely geo nodes with everything and so if i want to take the main mesh and make it the suzanne uh, i can just hide that one suzanne and the cool thing is and let me just pull up because I think I changed something here. Ah, there we go. So what I did is it made this kind of like user friendly, if you will. So like you've got uh, bullions in here that can have a color and an outline to them. So you can see where they begin and where they end. And then you can come back into the add-on and you can fi finalize all of these and turn them into a real mesh once you're done. Then you can kind of shove that to the side and introduce a new node group and then throw another uh, B box on top of that. All right, that's enough from me, guys. I appreciate y'all watching, listening, and tuning in. And until next time, happy blending, and I'll see you guys in the next.